It's a Thursday, March 24th, and the time for your Bobby Listerly Morning News update. The 18-year-old, who was preparing to become the country's youngest member of the Senate, is struggling to make sense of the arguments of independent senators who took issue with the proposed constitutional amendment intended to facilitate teenage representation in Parliament. Youth activist and law student Khalil Koftewala, who had been named by Prime Minister Mia Motley for appointment as a government senator once the amendments had been passed, insisted that it is logical that persons allowed to vote in an election be able to serve in the country's highest decision-making bodies. I accept entirely that there are people who believe that the age to sit in the House of Assembly or the Senate or both ought to be 21. My simple proposition in response to that is that there is no good reason why the two ages should be disparate, why they should be separate. So that if you believe that the age to sit in the parliament ought to be 21, then that is a perfectly legitimate view to which you are entirely entitled and I will defend your right to have that view. But that is a conversation for constitutional reform because what that will mean is that if you believe that the age for the parliament should be 21, then the necessary implication of that must be that the age to vote in Barbados be 21 also. That is a controversial conversation. That is a, uh, a significant change. Um, and that, that then will have to be the subject of year-long constitutional review process. Barbados's ability to forecast weather with greater accuracy and prepare the public for potential hazards is now top-notch with the official commissioning of a Doppler weather radar. Minister of Home Affairs Wilfred Abrams said the U.S. $3.5 million high-tech facility located at Castle Grant St. Joseph improves early warning and early action initiatives. The radar system that is there is critical for us in allowing us to predict, to track, and to manage climatic events. Without the radar, we're effectively flying blind. We depend on the National Hurricane Center for a lot of information as well, but Barbados needs to be in a position to calculate its own information, to verify the modeling of other persons, also to develop our own modeling. Because whereas other international entities concentrate on the entire Caribbean and with a focus on the United States and the East Coast United States, it is in our best interest to develop our own systems and our own independent analysis to allow us to be able to forecast what is happening. When a ration pack initiative has been developed by the Barbados Manufacturers Association to ensure the local sector remains functional and well positioned to respond to the needs of Barbados in a disaster. BMA's Executive Director Shadi Boy said the parks are prepackaged foods used in emergencies, including natural disasters. There are a number of deliverables that the Barbados Manufacturers Association expect to achieve from this initiative. Um, we want to find a way to use gluts in the agricultural sector. Many times we hear of farmers who have excessive amounts of vegetables at various times of the year. The Russian Pat Initiative provides the opportunity to integrate these products into the manufacturing process in a sustainable manner. This is sustainable manufacturing. Barbados has emerged as a hit at the World's Premier Fair Expo Dubai 2020. March 26 is Barbados National Day at the Pavilion and the island will be hosting a grand show. Expo 2020 was delayed because of COVID-19 and opened in October 2021. Angela Daniel Rampasad, one of the officers who has been working in the Barbados Pavilion, said the interest has been high. As you would have heard, heard we have 193 countries, mm -hmm. so 192 plus us, um, sharing our culture, our people, our experiences um, with the world at large and um, it's been a pleasure. It's hard work but it's worth it because Barbados will definitely and is definitely benefiting from having the pavilion here. There's so many, especially tourism, there's so many people who came into the pavilion and they came back and said, Angela, we are going to Barbados in April, we are going to Barbados in March, we are getting married there. There's regional and international news after this short break.
more oxygen means more energy means more adventure Pure Oxygen natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance the next generation of hydration Pure Oxygen nature's ultimate water New Brunswick Sardine Filets Boneless Ready to eat Perfect Son Hold on, hold on one more It is sardine Well, let's see And available in bold new flavors Brunswick Sardine Filets are giving sardines a new vibe To developments on the regional front, lawmakers in the Bahamas have been weighing in on the crime situation in the country. More from Eyewitness News. Two weeks of consistent bloodshed on the streets of New Providence not going unnoticed from those in Parliament. It's a concern for the Minister of National Security. Young men have taken it upon themselves to believe that it is normal and natural to run up on somebody with a gun that fires 7.62 rounds and shoots someone 24 times. That is where we are in this country. Those young men range in age from 18 to 30. The House of Assembly chaplain who called for stiffer penalties. Y'all don't want stiff penalties. Amen. This is serious time we are living in. And this is the last of evil days. We say this is land. Oh, the devil busy. I can get off that, man. The devil busy all the time. Don't blame it on land. The Bible said, train with the child and you should go meaning old. If you're not the part of them going quiet, because some of you must know train with the child. Block it. Let me pray before we have a revival up in this place, man. And the opposition deputy leader, Shannon Don Cartwright, who called on government to involve the opposition more. And finally, several countries are now seeing the highest death rates since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. That's according to the World Health Organization's Director General, Dr. Tedros Cabriesos. He told reporters in Geneva that the global increase in COVID-19 cases continues, driven by large outbreaks in Asia and a fresh wave in Europe. This reflects the speed with which Omicron spreads and the heightened risk of death for those who are not vaccinated, especially older people. We all want to move on from the pandemic, but no matter how much we wish it away, this pandemic is not over. Until we reach high vaccination coverage in all countries, we will continue to face the risk of infections surging and new variants emerging that evade vaccines. Even as some high-income countries propose a second booster dose, one third of the world's population remains unvaccinated. But there are some promising signs of progress. In Nigeria, for example, vaccine uptake was dramatically increased when supply stabilized and planning was done on how to effectively distribute vaccines. WHO's target remains to vaccinate 70% of the population of every country by the middle of this year. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.